late, my apologies. But let's pray. Let's pray and then we get the service going. Father, thank you for this day. As we come before you, may your word go forth. We thank you for bringing uh, those who've been travelling safely back, uh, Silas, Wing and the rest. We commit all we have to you. We ask, O oh God, that even as we come before you today, uh, something uh, good will happen. Our prayers will be answered and we will see the Spirit of God moving among the midst of your people. So, Father, we come all have to you. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I want to introduce some people that are new to us. Uh, Luther is a client. I just met him only. Uh, Luca, come, welcome him. Uh, good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, have to like him, his surname. Luther, go, right? Go also, right? Are you Teochew also? Teochew also? Yeah. Oh, Hokkien, but then mine is still go. I'm the Teochew one, the Haolian one, the pink, the pink back side. Anyway, it's good to see him. Uh, I, I, know, I know Luther only because uh, Clarissa went to take a taxi ride. And when she took a taxi ride two weeks ago, Luther was a taxi driver. And then when Luther took, the, uh, took Clarissa, don't know how they talk, talk, talk. And then she was, he was talking about how he wanted to get some medical report from SGH. And Clarissa was working there. To cut the long story short, immediately... Luther told him, told him about his own accident case and, you know, how whoever is lawyer, I don't know who, I don't know, uh, not really doing a job, you know, Megan, that's how you came to me, right? Uh, then the Luther came to see me and the Luther came to see me last week and I said, I said to Clarissa, I saw the message, she said, thank God. So I asked Clarissa, hope Clarissa is listening. I said, Clarissa, she, he said, thank God. Do you know whether he's a believer or not? Clarissa said, I don't know. I said, how can when people say, thank God, Phyllis, we must strike. That's why Phyllis is here again. Nyap, do you know that actually Phyllis, every Saturday at this time, should be a fitness buff and in gym, right? I just met her just now. The first time I shake her hand, she says, from now on, every Saturday she will come here. Is that correct? But when God speaks, that's how it is. When God moves the people, your priorities change. So Luther, I already told all the rest of the taxi driver, ex-taxi driver, grab a simikui. All today come and see you. That's why just now you're surrounded by all those gangsters. But that's the word of God and that's the family of God. But Luca, Luther just met Clarissa and Clarissa introduced Luther to me. I will be helping him with his claim. But more importantly, he's back in the family of God. Guys, this is Marketplace. If we get this right, everybody just bring one fella. I tell you now, I have a number 200. Is that correct, Karen? 200. Um, Silas, Gunn and I are going to London again. Three weeks, three, not three weeks, three years ago we went to London and this time we're going in July again. That is where I had the number 200. I came back, I told my wife, she keeps reminding me, you said 200. This church, when it hits 200, something will happen. We may have to a second branch. Why 200, Phyllis? Because 200, I still know who you are. When you come in, I don't pretend, pretend actually I don't know who you are. So when you come in 200 in the lift lobby, how are you doing? How's your dog? How's your cat? How's your cheetah? But if it's beyond 200, I don't know the name, I've got a problem. This church will be relational. This church will be familiar as in family. Everybody knows everybody. If it hits 200, Silas, maybe you'll be a bit busier because we will branch out. But 200 is the number God has given. So I want to just encourage you. I want to also baptize people. I, want, I told Chris, uh, 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 Chris and Denise, we, we need to baptize you. Then she says, today. Ah. I tell you, what kind of faith is this, man? If I say today, straight away, they'll do it, you know. But we want to baptize people. I told Sabrina, let's really talk to people about what baptism is. When you get baptized, you are telling the rest of the people that you belong to the family of God. And, and Chris has his own struggles with the family, like all of us. But I say, take care of you first. Take care of yourself, the rest of the family members. Let God take care of them. Have I not told you my father only became a believer for this at 85 years old? In my mind, I was in banking terms. I say, this one is bad debt. No chance. He's going to wherever I'm not, want, I'm not wanting to go. But some of my sisters are here. Miracle. He came to my elder sister and said, take this picture. Nah. He's thinking, what you want for? I want to be a Christian. This is the picture I use when I pass on, and I want to be a Christian. So I tell you, guys, if you first believe in God, Chris, there's a chance the rest of your family members will. Is that an amen? So I want to just leave that as a thought to you. Uh, today we have a very uh, interesting uh, time. Uh, later will be husband and wife team. Uh, Silas will, will play the guitar because the other two uh, are off on a staycation, and, and Jasmine is 
busy with some other people and Silas is going to play the guitar and the wife will give a testimony. But before we go that, I want to just talk a bit about how last week we talked about it is don't be don't be grieved and so grieved that you cannot rejoice or to cry. I tell people real men cry. Do you see me tear last week? Really? I was tearing, right? You think what I purposely tear to show you? Uh? I can't help myself sometimes, you understand? When God touches you, you tear. Chris, do you when God touches you, you tear lah, what? Pretend to be whatever, but when God touches us, something changes, all right? So too grieved to, to, don't be so grieved that you cannot rejoice. And sometimes, uh, on the flip side, ironically, don't be so grieved that you cannot cry. But today, I want to talk about how we should not be so broken that we cannot be used by God. Actually, God specializes in use, using broken people. The fact of the matter is that, actually, if you want to be a leader, wherever, I like to say, even for secular organizations, you must first be broken. If you go in and say, don't worry, I'm the best lawyer in town, I know everything, I wouldn't hire you. Janice, do you want to hire someone who says, I know everything? Will you? Yeah, I'm going to join your wealth management team. I tell you first, I'm very good. I everything so know. Will you hire me? You will, oh my goodness. Later I'll talk to you, you need ministry. But, but I think, I submit to you, and I heard a message from this marketplace leader running a church, marketplace leader, a bit like me, I hope, big church, I won't tell you which country, he said if he learned something at all, the people he wants to be leading in the church, he's looking for people who are broken. Broken in spirit, broken hearted, and today we better talk about what that means. So want to know something, that in this series of Two Not Two, you want to be you don't want to be so broken, you, you're not too broken that you cannot be used. God can use all kinds of people. In fact, God specializes in using people who are broken. And I want to just use that, undergird whatever we are going to talk about today by using that as a starting phrase. Okay? God use, chooses to use, Philip, God chooses the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. We all know that. God uses the broken to reach out to the lost. I've got one question for you. What cannot be used unless it is broken. Think of something. What cannot be used unless it's broken? Answer, Ivy? Egg. You want to use an egg, it must be broken. Ji tan. Right? Ji tan, Chris. That ji tan is broken, I say. Poor. The, bro- the egg has to be broken before you can use it. So I want to tell you that what cannot be used unless it's broken is an egg. And I've got three words that I want to talk about before we go on to some scriptures. Number one, we want to look at people. God can use people who are empathetic. God chooses to use people who have empathy. And later I want to talk about the difference between empathy and sympathy. God chooses people who, are, who show empathy. I hope you know the difference between a person who is sympathetic and empathetic, number one. Number two, G, God uses people who live their lives genuinely. Actually, I want to say to Luther, if I was not genuine, you wouldn't be here. Correct? If I was fake, you wouldn't be here. But if we're all genuine, people meet up, lives get changed, there's holy friction, and we rub each other the correct way. And sometimes, Phyllis, Nyak had to rub you a bit, that's why you're here. Correct? And Felice wants to say to you, you are the good soil. I know, I know. Later you tell me everything that's good about her. Actually, I already know. Okay? But you are the good soil. That's why you're here to, uh, again today. And don't talk so much. After the heat get too big. Uh, get, cannot control. But God will look at people who can be used. Number one, they must be empathetic. Number two, people who live their lives genuinely. I was just having a good uh, meal with uh, Wing uh, and, and, and TG talking about the struggles. And when I, I WhatsApp um, Wing that day, it's a horror story when you, uh, you, you WhatsApp someone and then he doesn't reply. The reply came from his friend who was using his mobile. It freaked me out. And after I, I don't know what to do, and then I, I forward to Sabrina. I think Sabrina freaked out even more than I. Can you imagine, let's say I, I, I text uh, Silas, who's in Doha, and guess what? The, the, the message came back. Uh, hi, I don't know who you are, but my name is John. I am with Silas now in the hospital. Why? Wow, look at that. I say, what in the world is happening? So, so, but Wing is here. We're talking about how don't be so stressed in your life. Keep on living. But if God wants you to go, you will go. But your time is obviously not up. 
how do we live our lives genuinely so that we're able to be a blessing to the people of God and to God Himself. So people who live genuinely, I want to talk about it. And number three, EGG, people who are generous. And I think when Silas talks about it next time in about a couple of weeks, you are not, you're too poor not to give. We need to be generous. And generosity takes many forms. Uh. Not only money, you know. Sometimes always people think generous means money. No. Generous with time. Generous with effort. I mean, if people like Megan already do so well to do, I give her money, no use on you. But if I show time and I talk to her, that's why she come. That's why she's here again. So I want to talk about these three things that will make a difference. Number one, empathy. There's a difference between empathy and sympathy. Don't show the slide first. But if I come to Winnie and say, oh, Winnie, you poor thing. You so poor thing. Last time can buy Ferragamo, now buy Giordano. You so poor thing. And then I do nothing. That's sympathy. But if I'm empathetic, oh, Winnie, you poor thing. Cannot buy Ferragamo, but how, tell you what, I can only afford Giordano. Can I buy for you Giordano? I take action. I join you at your hour of need. I help. So people of God, when you are helping people, always think about being empathetic. Don't just sympathize. Sympathy is nothing. It's cheap. Oh, yeah, so poor thing. Your client feels it's very difficult, right? I also know. But I do nothing. How about I say, well, yep, your client feels it's very difficult. Can we sit down with her? Maybe she needs some legal discussion or whatever. Free of charge. Let's meet for a meal and then we help. So there's a difference between empathetic and sympathetic. But do something about it. Number two, don't live your life as a fake Hang around genuine people. Number one, no filtering. Have you seen Madonna's pictures? She's now 63, right? I saw one picture, she looked 18. No? And then I saw another picture, apparently she was with uh, her son in Mayfair, some London thing, and that one, she really looked 63. So when your pictures, all in social media, all deeply filtered, no? it's a fake old, right? It's, that's not you. La. I mean, if Silas looks 57, 57, la. it's okay. What? They're all deeply filtered, all the fakes, so can we live genuinely, hang around genuine people? Wing, am I genuine? There's nothing fake about me. What I say is like that. that day, I was also, there was once I remember Silas was in my house. I was talking to some person who won't mention her name. You remember. I was talking to this person, quite influential. Then Silas said, who are you talking to? He, he thinks I was talking to this person. Then he asked, you know why? Because the way I talk to that person and to, to Gun and to everybody, all the same, consistent. So Silas said, who are you talking to? Are you talking to this person? I said, yeah. I say, you mean you talk to a person like that? I say, yeah, how else do you talk? I say, I talk to Wing, I talk to, uh, I talk to, to Silas, I talk to, to Luther, all the same, consistent. I am not a fake I don't know how to be a fake. I only know how to be genuine. And sometimes being genuine rubs people the wrong way. Be genuine. No filtering, no fakes, no fooling around. King David was one of those who's genuine. We've talked about King David two weeks ago, right? He's imperfect, he's broken, but remember, we talked about him being a man after God's heart and God was able to use him. Who was King David? A man who lived his heart, his life genuinely. We always say, right, gun, heart on your sleeve. You want to hang around people, Luther, with heart on your sleeve, meaning that you see the person you can see him, there's nothing that you can need to second guess. What he says, he means exactly that. If I tell uh, Yip, hey, Yip, I'm very tired, I mean exactly what I say. If Yip, I tell you, actually, I'm a bit pissed, you know, I mean it. My staff also know I'm legendary. I say, actually, uh, I'm very tired, don't waste my time. I actually mean it, no. So they quickly do the thing because I'm very tired, don't waste my time, can we finish and let me go? I still got to meet Yip after that. I'm very tired already. Can we finish this now? If I say good job, I mean good job. I say the things suck, I say, can we do better? And I'm legendary. Let's go. I say, have you applied your mind? Wow, this is legendary. If I say, have you applied your mind? You only hear one time, you don't hear it anymore. If I say to my, uh, my, my, my uh, colleague, right, uh, Wing, uh, have you applied your mind? That's bad news. That means I say you never think. But that's a very nice way of putting it. So, guys, live our lives genuinely hard on your sleeve. Nobody needs to second guess you. Number three, ache. 
Be generous. Be generous with your time. Be generous with your money. Be generous with your effort. Be generous with the attention you give people. Can we live our lives like that? To be generous means what? You give your life away. Phyllis, the only reason why you're here is Nyap is someone who gives her life away. That's why Penny is also here. That's why Janice is also here. That's why Miss Go is also here. When you give your life away, people get attracted. If we live our lives, we hoard ourselves, God, uh, I don't want to be a treasure for this church. Uh. A lot of time, uh, Ivy, Ivy say, no, I don't want to do bookkeeping. And then I got to answer you, Daniel Go, the legendary who say, have you applied your mind? I do you hear this word, apply your mind. Then I tell you, nothing is done. But if we live our lives and we are prepared to say, I live my life on the basis, Chris, I give my life away. Blank check. God, you want to use, use me. Whatever you tell me to do, I do. To be generous is to give your life away. And guess what? When you do so, Luther, you flourish. I don't know the Chinese word for flourish. You flourish. You do very well. I want to leave that as some thoughts. E-G-G. What cannot be used until you're broken Ache. Show empathy, be generous, live your life genuinely. Let's go to some verses today and let's talk about Jesus. Jesus in Isaiah 53.3. If you turn to Jesus, Isaiah 53.3, I want to just mention that this is Jesus. Jesus, Isaiah 53.3 says this, He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering, familiar with pain. Like one from whom people hide their faces, he was despised and we held him in low esteem. And maybe we should talk about it again come Good Friday. But Jesus is a man of sorrow. He came to be broken. Jesus, remember, he was very missional. When he came on earth, he only had one objective. To save people like Chris and Denise and also to save me. One objective. He was prepared to be broken. He was going to do whatever it needs. He was literally broken, right? When he was crucified, the, the, the legs, nails, whole body was broken. He was broken. He came to be broken. He came to die on the cross so that he could be used by God to save the world. Jesus, a man of sorrow, acquainted with the deepest grief. That's why we say he is a man of sorrow. God is not a man of joy. Remember last week you talked about it, right? Or was it Ecclesiastes 7 2? What do you, where do you learn better, Penny? When you have a party drinking sasikaya or when you go for a wake? You learn better when you are in a place of mourning. Not mourning. Mourning means complete. Mourning when you grieve, something happens. Another great man of God just passed away. Reverend, what's his name? Canon James Wong. 82 years old. I remember I was in St. Andrew's Secondary School. He used to stay down there. And now the, the, the son, Jonathan Wong, is also a pastor. One year my senior. Father just passed on, 82. A couple of weeks back, another man of God, marketplace, Richard Magnus, a judge, 78. No warning. Heart attack. Wasn't that what Cho Peng Sam said? He met him two days ago. He just went. Our time on earth is dictated by God. So Wing use whatever time we have left to serve God. Luther as well. Don't mess around. You don't know when you're going to go. But how about we use every last days of our lives to serve the God that deserves to be served? Too broken not to be used. What does it mean when we talk about someone who is broken? And today, I want to go to the anchor verse to some extent. I ask you to open your Bibles to Isaiah 51 and 16 and 17. Go to Isaiah 51, sorry, go to Psalms 51, 16 and 17. My apologies. I mean Psalm 51, 16 to 17. This is a psalm written by David and this is a psalm written by David when the prophet Nathan came to him after David had committed adultery. You remember this story, right? He committed adultery with, uh, with uh, Bathsheba and after that he had to murder the husband. You know why, Yip? because they were having some illicit relationship. So after he was found out, God sent prophet Nathan to confront him. This is the psalm written by David, who was obviously very broken. Look at Psalm 51, 16 and 17. 
Psalm 51, 16, you do not delight in sacrifice, or I would bring it, you do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. Verse 17, my sacrifice, O God, is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. You, O God, will not despise. I say it again, my sacrifice, O God, is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite spirit. You, O God, will not despise. This is King David, and I suggest to you that King David is up, as a man after God's heart. King David is not perfect, but when he screwed up, when he got it wrong, he was genuinely repentant. And you can see for yourself what he means when he says verse 16 and verse 17. Look with me. He says, verse 16, you do not delight in sacrifice or I bring it. He's saying, King David is saying that actually God, if you wanted sacrifice, I will bring it. Meaning that, let's say you need to bring something, I will bring it. If you want to burn offerings, I will bring it. But he says here in Psalm 51, 16, you do not delight in sacrifice, you do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. So what is King David saying here in 51, 16? He is saying that God is not interested. Well, if you want to do some burnt offerings, God, it is okay. But his delight, his focus, God, is not on the ritualistic. Are you with me? God is not interested only in your pai uh, pai here, pai pai there. I mean, it is good. I mean, if you give burnt offerings and everything during the festival, sort of you worship God, that's fine. But his delight, God's, uh, King David says, is, is not in sacrifice or bring it. You do not take pleasure only in burnt offerings. What is God looking for? Verse 17 is the key. My sacrifice is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. You, God, will not despise. So what is God looking for? What is King David saying that God's looking for? God is looking beyond your sacrifices. He's looking at something that is what? Transformational within yourself. Are you with me? God is looking for some changes within your heart. If there's no change in your heart, all this is bullshit. Chris, Denise, when you come, how many weeks already? How many months? Has your heart changed? Yes or no? Yes, right? I never threaten you, right? If you keep coming and your life is not changed, don't bother sacrificing to God. Then you better ask yourself, Lois, what does it mean in verse 17 that God is delighted in that sense with a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart? When something is broken, Silas, Angela, when something is broken, what does it mean? Broken. Break into pieces. Got it? So Wing, Luther, what does God want? He wants a heart or spirit that is broken. In pieces. When he wants a contrite heart, what is he looking for? When you're talking about something that's contrite, it is crushed. So he's looking for something that's broken. God is looking for a broken spirit and a contrite heart, a crushed spirit. What does that mean? You better know there are different kinds of brokenness. Huh? There are some people who are broken. Penny, I hope not. None of us here. Someone who is broken in a bad way is someone like this. I am so broken, and then you think that this is what God wants. Those people who are broken, they got zero motivation to live their lives. Have you got friends like that? No motivation. That's why I say if people are too rich, uh, got a problem. No motivation in their life. There's nothing to live for. You want this, you get this. Want to buy a sports car, get this. Pa, 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 everything money can solve. Until you get hit with an illness, then God will come in. If you are broken beyond motivational, meaning that you're so broken in spirit, you got no purpose in life. That is not what the Word of God says. Are you with me? That is not it. What is it here is a broken and contrite spirit is someone that surrenders your life. Surrender your life to the will of God. That is what it means. It's not in the slides here, but please listen carefully. Broken spirit doesn't mean, ah, oh, yeah, I'm so broken. Ah. I have got no meaning in life. Ah. Chris and Denise, today die means die. Ah. Jia ji, sui ji, ah. Ta yao tiao, lo wo ye tiao. That is not what it means. You understand? A broken spirit is someone who surrenders your life, yield to the word of God. If God wants you to do something, you do. If Silas is broken, it means that if God wants him to stay in the job, he stays. If God wants him to move the job, he moves. If God wants him to go this, he go. If God says don't go, he don't go. That is brokenness. Why is that brokenness? Because he yields to the will of God. God tells him to do something, he do. I tell you guys, wing. If you do that, your life is very simple. You don't need to think so much. 
doesn't make you stupid though. But what God wants you to do, you do. That is what 51.17 is talking about. My sacrifice. And it's a sacrifice. Why is it a sacrifice? 51.17 says it's my sacrifice. Of course it's a sacrifice. Megan, do you not sometimes want to do things your way? If not all the time. But if God says, Megan, don't do this, do it the other way. You why, why do the thing is a sacrifice because that's against your nature. You, you understand? Maybe Gun wants to do this and wants to, wants to move on to the next job, but God says, stay. Actually, you were dying to go. God says, your time is not up. I hope I'm not being prophetic. Your time is not up. Stay. That's a sacrifice. That's why it says, my sacrifice is a broken spirit. Meaning that you've got to do something that is against your own nature. That is a broken and contrite spirit. And today, if you forget anything else, you just remember this. My sacrifice is a broken and contrite spirit. God will not despise. Psalm 34, 18. What is God's response to those people who are brokenhearted in that definition? 34, 18. What is God's response? The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He saves them who are crushed in spirit. Isn't that a very encouraging verse? The Lord, 34, 18. He is close to the brokenhearted. In that definition, meaning those who are prepared to yield to him, Stanley, yield to God. Stanley told me today, Tai Pangcho 3.30. I was thinking, so? Still come lah. You think what? Free pass ah. I said, I'll pray for you that your tire will be uh, uh, mended very quickly. Quite, quite today, come today. Very good. Now this very fast. Go to a workshop, how hard? 10 minutes, patch, tire is done. He comes here, but the Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He saves those who are crushed in spirit. The righteous, listen guys, yep. Remember last week, I think with Royston, we talked about back-breaking job. You're supposed to sow righteousness, like sow and reap righteousness. It's back-plowing, it is painful, it takes, it takes a lot of effort. Remember last week, we talked about trench digging, right? Army boys will remember. The righteous may have many troubles. For goodness sake, don't be deluded. Just because Silas and I or Nyap or Gan or Wing want to do God's work, will there be troubles on this earth? Absolutely. The righteous may have many troubles, but... The Lord delivers them all. He will come true. He's for us. What is the state of the heart? Daniel 5.20 is a very good example of a king. I think it's Nebuchadnezzar, whose heart became arrogant and hardened with pride. Today, I don't have much time to talk about it, but listen to the state of the heart. When his heart became arrogant and hardened with pride. He was disposed, he was deposed from his royal throne and stripped of his glory. Nebuchadnezzar was rich, beyond rich, influential. But when he started to be arrogant and his heart was hardened with pride, what happened to him? If you read the book of Daniel, came to a point whereby he looked like an animal, became very hairy. Nebuchadnezzar, right? State of the heart. When your heart becomes hardened, when you're not broken in spirit, you're not broken, you don't have a broken and contrite, you're not crushed by the will of God, you got a problem because you believe in your own height. <laughs> I'm actually a very good no go. I'm the best. You believe in your own heart. You actually believe it. Oh, I'm very good, I'm very good. Very good. Sally say, I'm very good, I'm very good. We need to say, I'm very good. You got a problem because pride consumes you and then you don't need God anymore. State of the heart. Isaiah 57, 15. I live in a high and holy place. If you go to the word of God, God says in Isaiah 57, 15, I live in a high and holy place, but I also live with the one who is contrite and lowly in spirit. God is everywhere. God is not in a bad way, high, living somewhere, high and mighty, so to speak. But he also comes down to people like us. Those people who have got problems, he recites with those who are contrite and lowly in spirit. People who are prepared to yield to him, he will watch over you. Isaiah 66, 2, this is what you want to know. These are the ones I look on with favor. God gives favor to those people. And this year, we talk about the year being the Lord's favor, right, Sabrina? The Lord's favor is on those people who are what? These are the ones I look on with favor, those who are humble and contrite in spirit. God specializes. If you are humble, your contrite in spirit, Favor of God follows you. Because you're humble. You're crushed. You're prepared to do God's work. Actually, everything shouts in your human nature. Say, I want to go this way, but God push you and you, you're prepared to turn and go the way God wants you to go. He sticks with you. In fact, 
I think Isaiah 66 too. I just want to, I, mem- I thought I remember. There's a last part to it. Isaiah 66 too. Let me just quickly read to you. Isaiah 66 too. Has not my hand made all these things and so they came to being, declares the Lord. 66 too says here, these are the ones I look on with favour. Those who are humble and contrite in spirit and who tremble at my word. Sorry, that part is missing. If you are humble and contrite in spirit, you tremble at God's word, meaning that you, your life is lived, Genesis, only by the word of God. When God says something, you tremble. Actually, Phyllis, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. So what is there not to, not to... Why are you so surprised by it? If you tremble in God's word, meaning that if God's word says this, you never do what is contrary to the word of God. Correct? That's trembling in the word of God, being humble, being contrite, being crushed, Crush doesn't mean that you become an idiot, no. What does Paul say? I was crushed on all sides, but he survived. This is what it means. God's favour is on those who are humble, contrite in spirit, who tremble at his word. I want to warn all of us, be careful. Sometimes we think, this is a word called lifted heart. When your heart's lifted, sounds good, right? Yep, wing. If your heart's lifted, please be careful. Deuteronomy 8, 10 to 14. Be careful that you do not forget the Lord. Otherwise, when you're satisfied, fine houses, GCB, terrace, whatever you want, you get silver and gold increase. All you have is multiplied. Last time used to be worth 10 million, now worth 100 million then your heart will become proud and you will forget the Lord. A broken person must remember God because when you become your state of your heart, you, you, you are able to just think, God, I can do anything by one. Be careful because when you are satisfied materially, when you have all you need in terms of fine houses, silver and gold, blah, 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 and everything you want, you get and it's multiplied, then your heart will become proud and you forget the Lord. Psalm 51.10. King David, when a prophet came to him after he committed adultery, 51.10 says, Create in me a pure heart and renew a steadfast spirit within me. That is why when the sacrifice of David came, God received it because it was genuine. He was crushed. Why was King David crushed? Because he knew he, he screwed up big time. You understand? He committed adultery, he murdered. He knew He was wrecked with guilt. Did he try to save his son? The one born out of adultery, Bathsheba's, did he try? He he put on sackcloth and he prayed, no? Did the son survive? The son died. After the son died, what did he do? Took out sackcloth, carry on. Some prayers God may not answer. God didn't answer that prayer. I'm sure he went on sick of God, I'm really sorry. Can you please save this son? I know it's born out well as adultery. Will you save? God said no. But once it's done, took out sackcloth, carried on. But there was genuine repentance. If you read Psalm 51, you can tell. Create in me a pure heart and renew a spirit within me. When we come to the end of ourselves, and we acknowledge that we need Him. That's being brokenhearted. Come to the end of yourself. And later you should hear Winnie. I tell you, Winnie's life is engineered only by God, and so the rest of us. The things that happened 10 years ago, now you're beginning to un- understand why you have to go through. And I want to talk about it later. Where does, why does God specialize in using those who are brokenhearted? We talk so much about brokenhearted. Why does God want to use those who are brokenhearted? Because 2 Corinthians 12.10 say, when we are weak, He's strong. But when you're strong, you think you're strong, God cannot use you. Genesis, when you are weak, God is strong. For Christ's sake, I delight in weakness, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, Paul says, he is strong. For Christ's sake, it's not for goodness sake, it's for the sake of Christ. For the sake of Christ, Miss Go, Luther, come one to be weak. When you're weak, 
then God can use you. But if you think that I can do everything, God cannot use you. So that's why God is always, and I, I, I echo what the, that, that the marketplace leader who's got a big church going, he says, if I learn anything, we find people who serve in church, those who are broken. Those are the ones God can use. Why does God specialize in using those who are broken? Because when we are weak, we come to the end of ourselves, we believe that God can help us. 2 Corinthians 1.13 The weak, the broken, and the flawed can relate when you are someone is broken and you are then sent and later you hear Winnie's testimony when you are then sent to go out to minister to some people who have the same problems that you went through you are the best person that's what I said right? last week anybody who needs to deal with uh, special needs children come look for me those who bankrupt any bankrupts here raise your hands go to the bankrupt bankrupt before now no more bankrupt ah wing wing bankrupt before right he raised his hand. There's no shame. But I remember helping him. You're supposed to go to jail, right? Didn't go. Who's the lawyer? Very good lawyer, no? If someone is going through a divorce, I know of a few people here who can help. And Joe will tell you he's gone, she's gone through before. And some others. But these are the people, when you've gone through something, you are the best person. Why? 2 Corinthians 1 3 says, He is the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort. You must understand, God allows you to go through something, and when you have gone through something, you get out of it, fine. When the next person who goes through what you're going through, you, because of what you've gone through, and you're working with Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, you'll be able to help those who need comfort. 2 Corinthians 1 3. Father of compassion. God of all comfort, who comforts us all in our troubles, so that when we need comforted, she can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. Make sense? When you go through something, God comforts you, right? So when the next one comes, you can then be the best person. That's why I always look for people. Luther, that's why I send you, Luther, taxi driver, right? So he's surrounded by the grab people just now. We look for people who are able to connect with someone because of what they've gone through. Ephesians 2.9 We, the weak, the broken, the flawed, rely on grace. I'm just paraphrasing. We are acutely aware of our limitations with no special qualifications, so we cannot boast. When we minister, there's nothing to boast about because all of us know deep within ourselves, it is God. Silas and I know that perfectly well. For the things that we do, it is God. Actually, Silas will think, wow, this Doha trip, how come so many times cannot go and then suddenly can go and just came back? Because God is in the business of engineering our lives. Who are we to plan our lives? If we plan our lives, I tell you, we're setting ourselves for failure. Of course, it's good to plan. But when you plan, understand that God is the one that determines our steps. Make sense? You can plan all you want. No? Who don't plan for success? Huh, Penny? You plan for failure? You, you plan to be penniless, no, pen, no pun intended. Nobody! You can plan all you want, but it is God that will determine our steps. Ah, Silas, well, he's got big plans, man. I want to build this, I want to do this, uh, maybe this joint me. But it is God that will determine our lives. So when you are broken hearted and contrite, you are just saying, God, God, I surrender. A surrender doesn't mean my sing liao one, In fact, surrender means I want to play. I want to play God's game. You follow? Say one more time. My sing liao doesn't mean my sing liao. My sing liao meaning that I don't play on my terms anymore. Make sense? I don't play on my terms anymore. God, whatever you want, I surrender. I won't fight you. You tell me to do something, I will do. Megan, God tells you to come to church, you come. After the three times, the contractual thing where we have, still come. Winnie, she's supposed to come in three times, she says. The fourth time, make sure she still come. But when we do that, we are able to rely on God. That crushed and contrite spirit in that definition. Look at the cloud of witnesses. God specializes in using these people. Won't mention their names. The loud mouth, that's Peter. The adulterer, that's David. The speech impaired, 
I think it's Moses. The extremely intelligent prosecutor, that's Paul. Do you know Paul, in modern times, he is worth two PhDs? That's how brilliant this guy is, Paul. He's a double PhD. The one who went around persecuting Christians, right? The prosecutor. He's very, very smart. That's why he can write the way he writes. But, Kanna one time God, broken spirit, God tell him, what are you doing? Whole life change. His motives, his motivations took a 180. Not 360. 360 means you come back and do the same thing. 180 U turn. Last time used to persecute. Now he defends Christians. Now that is the man. That is the measure for man who is broken in spirit. We are not too broken not to be used for God to forward his kingdom and to reach the lost. I want to ask we need to just come and give a testimony. I, think, I believe, uh, I mean, uh, it's an interesting time. So, so I want to just ask we need to just come. Can, can we welcome Winnie for a while? Yeah, please. Hi everyone. Um, hello, hello. Okay. Yeah. So just a quick share of my my testimony today. Um, and before I start, I just want to say that um, you know, if 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 anyone amongst us is feeling down with the burden of the world, you know, upon you, there's just two things which I you know just want to kind of share with you, and it comes from a place of humility and, and strength. So first, no matter how dark your situation seems to be, whether it is your health, the health of a loved one, it's a relationship, it's a job issue, the Lord is infinitely faithful, and um, He's always near to lift you and comfort you, uh, to bring you to a better place than you were before. And second, know that the Lord will never let you suffer in vain. And so even when your spirit is down and is broken, there is always a purpose behind it. And only, if, you know, sometimes if we just open our eyes and we'll still be, be able to see the beauty in God's hand. Um, I know it's not the first time I share a testimony and just excuse me if you've heard this story before, um, but some of you would have known uh, around something I share about the, well, I was thinking when I was writing this, it was one of the darkest moments of my life, but it was the darkest um, moment of my life. So for anyone who has have lost a loved one, I'm sorry, I'm emotional. It's been more than 10 years, so I'm still emotional. <laughs> I was just talking to my husband. I'm such an emotional uh, person. So it's, it's more than... It's more than 10 years ago, my sister lost her battle to cancer. She was, she was only 43 years old, and she left behind two children, husband, and of course, you know, siblings and family that love her more than anything in the world. And she was the most, she was the most insp inspirational person, um, woman, beautiful inside out. She was God-loving, she's God-fearing, she's She's compassionate, she's capable, she's kind. All the things that I really admire. And um, at the time for me, the kids were young. And, and then I was working, uh, I'm still working, but I was working and, and I was promoted to a new role. Um, and it was a big job. And I was also, oh, you know, you're, you're one of the key talent that we want to, to groom. So all that was going well, but it was immense pressure for me. And um, I, I, I tried to be everything to everyone all at once. I want to do well my job. I want to be a great mom, a sister, etc. But um, my cup was drained and empty. And I think I had nothing to, to give. You know, my own cup was empty. So I was mentally and emotionally unwell. And then, of course, it affected my physical wealth. And... You know, like what Daniel said earlier, when you are brokenhearted and you're broken and you come before God, you know, God's not going to turn his eyes away from, from you. And so when I reached out to God, he spoke very clearly to me one day. And I'm, a, I'm actually a planner. I'll, I'll say this first. I plan everything the weekend. I plan my work day. I plan everything. I plan the kids' 
schedule a plan, I'm a planner. But God said um, very clearly that his plans are greater than mine. And we, you know, I think again, like what Daniel said earlier, we, we can plan all we want, but the best plans is God's plan. And so his word was, let me take over your planning. And that's um, when I actually decided to, to resign. It was, it was a bit, if you, if you look at it from a, from a, a pure uh, world perspective, then it's a bit counterintuitive because it's going well for you in a career. Why are you choosing to quit? Uh, but I chose to listen to God and obey, and I resigned. And, and through that, I found the healing which I needed. So the time off um, was was um, wonderful, and I would not have been able to experience it if I didn't just kind of submit my own planning and my own life before God, broken before Him. And then fast forward to, to a month ago, and this was like 11 years ago, and I'm still emotional when I talk about it, but fast forward to a month ago, I was approached um, by the global team um, who doesn't know my story clearly. So, so, you know, they're based of UK and they reach out to me and they ask if I would consider co-hosting a global event with my global boss. Um, and it was a mental health event, right? So it, it was um, an event that would have attendees across geographies, you know, people all over the world, part of the department will, will listen in. So initially I hesitated because, uh, you know, I actually don't really like spotlight on me. Like, even today, like, she was like a spotlight on me. But um, I knew in my heart, even if my sharing could just touch one person's life, then I think it's worth it. So I prepared myself again, plan, prepare, ready for the day. And I think all I needed was just share with my heart authentically, share genuinely. That's all that was needed. And um, through that sharing, actually, I talk about the setbacks and the challenges, about myself taking a, taking a break from work, and then back again. And of course, by God's grace, you know, coming back into a bigger job, into a promotion. And you know, no, no one would have planned the journey, right? You, you take a break from you think it's the peak of your career because you had to. But coming back, you know, God has something else and even better for me. And post that, I had people, you know, in, in um, the organization that wrote to me, you know, um, from different continents and also sharing their own struggles and challenges. I guess in a corporate, it's very easy that we all have a front, right? Everything seems to be well, but behind everyone, there is a story. So they came to me and uh, besides thanking me, they reached out to me and I think what really meant in that sharing was that there is actually strength in um, being vulnerable. You know, whether you are a leader, uh, your mom, your dad, when you show your vulnerability, you're being genuine, there is actually strength. So that um, reminds me also God's word in Second Corinthians, which uh, Daniel quoted earlier, that for Christ's sake, I delight in weakness, in insults, in hardships, in, persecu in persecutions, in difficulties, for when I am weak, he is strong. So revealing my weakness at a time of you know, brokenness, um, I'm also strong. So, but that didn't really stop there. And a few weeks ago, um, I learned of a staff who was suffering from depression. And uh, he wasn't you know, as well supported uh, as he, he should have been you know, uh, living alone uh, in Singapore, family in other countries. And I think with the pandemic, uh, we kind of undermine the kind of pressure uh, these people, you know, who work in Singapore away from their family, how they have been. So while he didn't report directly to me, I spent some time understanding his situation, um, which I felt perhaps people around him couldn't. And why I could is, you know, I felt convicted in my heart to intervene and do something to support him. And, and I think, again, just kind of looking back, the empathy came very natural. I didn't have to search very deep and far. I didn't have to search very deep and far in order to be able to just kind of understand what he's going through. Of course, his circumstances are different from me, but because of his mental health situation, um, he, won he chose to go back home and he had to resign without a job. 
So I think while the, while the circumstances leading it was different, but um, for him to, to quit the job is tough. And I know how that felt. So I think through, through that, um, and you know, even in the corporate when it's really, uh, work can be stressful and there's a lot of things going around us, I felt that talk is cheap sometimes. I could speak at a global event, talk about mental health, share my journey, but when it comes to a real situation with somebody and you're not able to empathize and be with them, it's actually just futile. And so talk is cheap. And so my past you know, experience, my feeling of grief and darkness, I, I know how I can actually reach out to the person. So that's his own road to recovery. And you know, his, 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 his is, in a way, a blessing back to me when I see his spirit being lifted. And that reminds me again, 2 Corinthians verse, um, verse, chapter 1, verse 3, that Father of compassion and the God of all comfort who comforts us, in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. So God, I, I went through the experience, God comforted, comforted me and, and this is how I could also then extend my comfort to somebody else. So with this, I'm, I will end my sharing and just to reiterate what I said in the beginning, that God is there even when it feels like it's all dark. And as a child of God, nothing happens by coincidence. So our painful experience can actually be a healing experience for someone else. So be blessed even when you're down. Just continue to know that God is there, right there to support us. Amen. Check one. When people speak, they all go down, you all clap. When I speak, when I go down, nobody clap. But broken spirit means that you don't take offense. You understand? Right, Phyllis? It's okay. We're going to sing this song, It Is Well. The person who wrote this, his name is Horatio Spafford. Horatio Spafford knew something about life's unexpected challenges. He was a successful lawyer and real estate investor. He lost a fortune in the great Chicago fire of 1871. Uh, around the same time, his beloved four-year-old son died of scarlet fever. That's Spafford for you. So he thought, okay, my son died, I better give a vacation to my wife and the rest of the four daughters. Thinking a vacation would do his family some good, he sent his wife and four daughters on the ship to England from US, planning to join them after he finished some pressing business at home. However, when the wife and the four daughters were crossing the Atlantic Ocean, the ship was involved in a terrible collision and sunk. More than 200 people lost their lives, including all four of Horatio Spafford's daughters. His wife, Anna, survived the, tra the tragedy, tragedy. Upon arriving in England, she sent a, at that time got no mobile, iPhone 14. She sent a telegram to the husband and began, saved alone, what shall I do? Horatio immediately set sail for England at one point during his voyage. The captain of the ship, I don't know whether she had done it, but he did it anyway. During the voyage, trying to reach out to the wife who is now in England, the captain of the ship, aware of the tragedy that struck the Spafford family, summoned Horatio to tell him that they were now passing the spot where the shipwreck had occurred. As Horatio thought about his daughters, words of comfort and hope filled his heart and mind. He wrote them down and they have since become a well-beloved hymn. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my Lord thou has taught me to know, it is well. It is well within my soul. If you love your sister 20 years down the road, if I were to ask we need to come and share again, she will still be emotional. But if you are broken before God and you yield your life to live it for God, I mean, Horatio, he's the best recipient, isn't it, to blame God 
first the son died, scarlet fever, and then you think that let's send the wife and the four daughters go England for a vacation, send them, and actually by sending them to England, you send them to the death. Four daughters died, so all five children died, leaving the wife. But the man came up with the song, despite all those. He was not broken-hearted, you understand? He was not broken-hearted in that. I mean, he could have gone. If you have five children, you lose all five, then what do you do? My sheng liao, as in, I think I also want to jump off and just drown. He was not broken-hearted. He was not broken in spirit in the bad sense. He was broken, but he was broken for God's will to be done in his life. He allowed himself to be healed. He wrote this song, It is well. It is well within my soul. I, I draw such encouragement. When times are tough, when you are succeeding in something, nobody needs God. But it is times like this. And that's why people who are bankrupted, Wing will be the best person. People who go through cancer, we need the best person. People who go through depression, we need is the best person. Looks like Winnie can do a lot of things. But whoever has that capacity, that's only because God has healed you and God can use you. As Silas now, because the wife speak, he insists on playing today. Actually, it's not true. The other two can't make it. As we sing this song, can you remember God? That God will not push you, Janice, beyond what you can bear. Water off the duck's back, it is well. You can begin. Let's pray. Father, as we come before you, as we come to the end of the service, Lord, thank you. We are not so broken that we cannot be used. As we hear the testimony of Winnie and also Spatford, that successful businessman, Lord, we are but servants of God. And if we are open, come to God. Let Him break you, not to curse you, but be broken in spirit and in your heart. A broken and contrite spirit and heart. The Word of God says, I will not despise. So I want to pray for you with no one looking around as Silas begins to play with my wife, Karen. Release your brokenness, your difficulties to God. Let Him come true for you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Can we all stand?
thank you as we come before you may it be spoken in times of rejoicing and even in times of trouble that my brother and sister that is represented before you this evening they will say to you Lord regardless of circumstances Lord it is well within my soul Lord bless everyone that is here so that Lord when they hit a shipwreck moment when times are tough, when things do not look good, when financially, when physically, when spiritually they are down, Lord, encourage them, comfort them, so that, Lord, they are able to say, Dear Lord, my sacrifice is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. You, God, will not despise. And my brother and sister will be able to say, It is well. It is well within my soul. Father, thank you. Until we meet again, Lord, release anointing upon the lives of my brothers and sisters here so that, Lord, when they go back to the marketplace, they'll be able to bring comfort to those people who need the touch of God. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you. It is well indeed for the people of God. Father, thank you. We pray all this through the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. Thank you so much, guys. We'll see you next week. Good Friday is a holiday, so to speak, but remember to come to church on a Saturday. We'll see you next Saturday. God bless you. See you.